uh, with Marina, with you today, so that we will be able uh, also to discuss about your assignments you already did. Um, as you already know uh, everything about us, we want to introduce ourselves again. Uh, I will just uh, give a floor to Marina to um, say hello to you. Hello, everybody. I hope you are well tonight. Uh, although you have still some deadline in front of you today or tonight and tomorrow. So uh, in continuation of Anita's presentation and introduction to the second part of the course, I will uh, share with you some reflections to the current activities or let, let's say some reflections to our work in these past two and a half weeks. So I wish you uh, now a pleasant time with Anita and a successful, uh, let's say, a uh, new step into the second part of From Sparkle to Flame, The Power of Creation. So, as you already read, uh, uh, I think you know that we will uh, be dealing with innovation management, uh, with knowledge-based economy. Uh, in these 10 days, therefore, I prepared some slides, uh, of course, on this topic. Of course, we cannot um, deal with uh, each subfield that you will learn in these 10 days, but we can uh, highlight perhaps some most important that uh, will be useful for you in the following days. Uh, I just stated three thoughts, perhaps just to read them and think about them a little bit. The first one is just, you just, uh, you must be the change you want to see in the world. The second one is do not take status quo as grounded. Always think of change for the better. And the third one is no mission is impossible if a dedicated unwavering personal group is prepared to work hard for it. So if we read all three thoughts, uh, we can see some similarities in this. Can you see? It's somehow related to our topic, to everything that you will read in these following days. And it's of course related to knowledge, to innovation, to and the next step, knowledge-based economy. So what exactly knowledge-based economy is. Does anybody know already? You are not in the mood to, to speak with me yet. You will be perhaps more um, communicating with Marina later. Oh, you don't know yet. Okay. Then we, pre we present, uh, yeah, innovation. Innovation is definitely, uh, and research is definitely related to knowledge-based economy. And if we look at the, yeah, research and development, if we look at the, the formal definition of knowledge-based economy that was written by Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, we can see that knowledge-based economy is an economy in which the production, distribution, and the use of knowledge is the, mi the main driver of growth. So as the, the, the term uh, is showing us, the knowledge is the front of everything. So if we speak about knowledge, we should, of course, know what exactly knowledge is. And if we look at the Samuel Johnson definition of the knowledge, we can see that knowledge is of two kinds. We know a subject ourselves, or we know where we can find information upon it. Um, if we would look into the dictionary for the definition of knowledge, we could find that the knowledge is the fact of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience or associations. But when we talk about knowledge in the economy, 
We should know that knowledge is not only associated with power, but is also associated with productivity. And uh, economically useful knowledge has become one of the key elements of the future. So when we say knowledge, we do not only mean the know-how of each individual, but also the potential knowledge that is accessible to anyone in a team. Um, I would like to expose also different kinds of knowledge. The, distinct, the distinction between different kinds of knowledge is very important in knowledge-based economy. And you can see that there are four main different kinds of knowledge um, that, that are know-how, know what, know why, and know who. Um, we must know that uh, um, knowledge is much more broader concept than just information. And uh, information is generally know what and know why components of knowledge. And these are also the types of knowledge which come closest to being economic resources and economic production function. And other types of knowledge, which you can see know how and know who, are more uh, difficult to codify and to measure. So if we just take a look at uh, these four kinds of knowledge in more detail, we can say that know what refers to knowledge about the facts. So uh, this means how many people live in uh, Slovenia, how many people live in uh, Macedonia, in Croatia, and so on. That, that means, uh, for example, what are the ingredients in pancakes, or I don't know, when was the Battle of Waterloo, and so on. So these are examples of uh, this kind of knowledge. Here, knowledge is close to what is normally called information. And in some complex areas, experts must have a lot of this kind of knowledge in order to fulfill their jobs. Examples here are practitioners of law or medicine. And if we look at the second kind of knowledge, know why, it refers to scientific knowledge of the principles and laws of nature. Um, this kind of knowledge underlies technological development and project and process advances in most industries and the production of know why is often organized in specialized organizations such as research laboratories, universities, research centers, and so on. And to get access to this kind of knowledge, firms have to interact with, uh, of course, these organizations um, uh, to be able to, to get this knowledge. Uh, the third kind of knowledge, know-how, you already heard about uh, uh, every uh, each each kind of the knowledge, but know how I think that it's the most uh, now uh, known um, uh, for us. But know hows, uh, as definition say, it refers to skills or capability to do something. So, businessmen judging market prospects for a new product or a personal manager selecting and training staff have to use their know how. Um, the same is true also, for example, the skilled, the skilled worker operating in the complicated tools. Um, hmm. Know-how is typically a kind of knowledge developed and kept uh, with the broader of an individual firm. firm. So uh, one of the most important reasons for the formation of industrial networks is the need for firms to be able to exactly share and combine the elements of know-how. Um, and the last one, know-who, here comes in the front. So know-who involves information about who knows what and who knows how to do what. So it involves information of special social relationship, relationships which make it possible to get access to experts and the use uh, their knowledge efficiently. Um, these four kinds of knowledge 
of course takes place through different channels. While no what and no why can be obtained through reading books, attending lectures, uh, or accessing databases, the other two kinds of knowledge are um, um, placed in practical experiences. So why reasons engage in basic research is to acquire access to networks of academic experts that are crucial for their innovative capability. And know who is socially embedded knowledge which cannot be easily transferred through formal channels of, of, formation, of information. And here we can see uh, changes that are associated with the importance of knowledge as an economic driver. Um, we know that the, the increasing importance of knowledge is changing the way firms compete and the, the sources of comparative advantage between countries. And um, for countries in the forefront of the world economy, it's reality that the balance between the knowledge and tangible resources has shifted so far toward the former and that knowledge has become perhaps the most important fa factor um, that determine the standard of living. And the main changes associated with the importance of knowledge as an economic driver are listed here on this slide. So knowledge is increasingly considered to be a community. Advance in information and communication technologies have reduced the cost of many aspects of knowledge activity and the degree of connectivity between knowledge agents has increased dramatically. So, we come to the question, what then the difference between knowledge and information management is? We know that this term has always been a bit tricky because knowledge and information are used uh, usually for the same thing by so many people. Um, I'm sure that you often found also that knowledge uh, management solution um, are somehow more or less information or document management systems which handle data information or perhaps even explicit knowledge but which do not touch the most essential part of knowledge man management that that's tacit knowledge. We can see here the main different uh, knowledge management that is uh, um, collecting and distributing knowledge, so both knowledge, explicit and non-explicit, um, and the second one, so information management that is uh, uh, dealing especially with explicit knowledge. And here you can see the main difference in differences between both uh, uh, management, so between information and knowledge management. Um, information management focuses on data and information and is dealing with unstructured and structured facts and figures and uh, benefits from technology focuses on organization, uh, on organizing, uh, analyzing. Um, it's largely about know what and it's really easy to copy. On the other hand, knowledge management focuses on knowledge, on understanding, on, on wisdom and deal with both. Uh, so codified and uncodified knowledge um, technology is useful, but knowledge management is focusing on people and processes. Uh, we must know that in knowledge economy, knowledge-based economy, the most valuably, valuable knowledge cannot be effectively transferred with technology. It must be passed on directly from person to person. Another difference is, is focusing on locating, understanding, enabling, and encouraging, 
and it's largely about know how, know why, and know who. So the second, the third, and the fourth uh, kind of uh, uh, knowledge we mentioned before. And this, the last one is the characteristic that is really hard to copy. And if you come next to the knowledge economy framework, it's really important for you to understand and to know about it because um, it was evaluated, uh, developed by, uh, by World Bank um, in order to evaluate the quality adaptation and the use of knowledge in an economy. So the goal of this framework is to create an effective knowledge economies that are capable of competing in the global economy. Um, as you can see, it, is, uh, <clears throat> it uh, focuses on four pillars, which it suggests are needed to support a successful knowledge economy. We can see the first pillar, uh, an economic and institutional regime that is conductive to the creation, diffusion and utilization of knowledge. Uh, a regime that provides incentives that encourage the use and allocation of existing and new knowledge efficiency with help to foster policy change. Uh, that means that every economic environment must have good policies and be favorable to market transactions, such as being open to free trade, being open to foreign direct investment, uh, and so on. So the government should protect property rights to encourage entrepreneurship and knowledge investment. The second one is innovation system. Innovation system uh, is meaning exactly uh, uh, well-educated and skilled population, um, um, uh, well-educated and skilled, uh, sorry, 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 uh, innovation system means that f research centers, university, think tanks, consultants, and other organizations are in the uh, country or in the economy. And that means that they adapt knowledge, global knowledge to local needs and create new technology. So every economy should also have all the infrastructure for generation uh, uh, new ideas and new innovations. The third one is information infrastructure. Um, information infrastructure facilitates the communication, uh, dissemination, and processing of information and technology. The increased flow of information and knowledge worldwide reduces transaction costs, leading to greater communication, productivity, and output. And the fourth one is uh, education population. That's what uh, the word already says. So we need also educated population that creates, that shares, that uses the knowledge efficiently. So uh, education, especially in the, in the scientific and engineering fields, is of course also necessary to, to achieve uh, uh, economic growth. With these uh, pillars in place, countries uh, can develop a knowledge economy and can sustain somehow uh, long-term economic growth. And we, as, we also mentioned innovation. We also mentioned in, uh, uh, infrastructure for, for uh, innovative ideas, so I'm wondering what exactly innovation is. Yeah, having original ideas, improving Improving processes, improving cost, yeah, products.
creating here finding better ways of doing things excellent making it better new idea making efficiency great I think that new ways of doing things new idea new device new methods excellent yeah the innovation is not a new word we already uh, of course um, are hearing about it for for last decades so um, it's not it's not uh, really surprising that uh, already Schumpeter uh, that I, I think you already know know him um, defined the innovation the term innovation already in 1934 and uh, he associated the term innovation it's to economic development to a new combination of productive resources and um, um, he focused on five specific cases introduction of new products uh, new production methods exploration of new markets uh, conquering new, so new sources of supply and new ways of organizing business. Um, since then, of course, the concept of innovation has uh, evolved significantly over the last 40 years. And uh, uh, during 1950s, innovation was considered to be a discrete development resulting the, from studies carried out by isolated researchers. But nowadays, innovation is no longer conceived as a specific result of individual actions, but is more uh, the following, as I stated here in the slide. So it can be a process, uh, more specifically a problem-solving process. Uh, it is an interactive process involving relationship, relationships between firms with different actors. It is diverse learning process. It is uh, involving the exchange of codified and tested knowledge or its interactive process of learning and exchange where interdependence between actors generates an, an innovative systems or an innovative cluster. Um, the, increase, uh, the increasing importance of knowledge as an economic driver has a major implication for innovation management, uh, which is in turn a key determinant of national and regional competitiveness. And uh, the systemic approach to innovation, recognizing that innovation and knowledge generation take place as a result of a variety of activities, many of them outside of a formal research process. Um, knowledge is thus generated not just in university and research centers but also in a very wide variety of locations within the economy um, and of course notable as a product i explained you really fast the the, the main topics of the following days that we will be together uh, here I stated also the assignment uh, which you will be preparing uh, uh, as your last assignment it's not really difficult um, you have um, got a few videos and also some articles that you can uh, read about knowledge-based economy that you can read about theories you can read about uh, um, um, innovation, innovation management, management techniques and so on and after reading uh, uh, um, the materials and watching uh, videos you will be able to uh, prepare a list of challenges uh, that are coming with knowledge driven economy and how exactly can entrepreneurs uh, overcome these challenges so the document should be uh, one page long um, this is of course uh, uh, maximum um, but when when you will be writing or preparing this uh, assignment of course you won't be able to focus on each 
of the challenge. Uh, so uh, don't worry, there should be at least, um, I don't know what we will say, three, or five, three to five challenges and you can focus on them. Uh, of course, there are a lot of them, but as I said, three to five will be enough. And of course, to um, explain each of the challenge and to explain how, how you suggest that entrepreneur can overcome the challenge. So, um, I won't go into details in the theory um, because I think it's more important for you to understand really um, the main characteristic of knowledge, of knowledge-based economy, um, innovation, and uh, what, what is next. Next is innovation management techniques, that's what you will read about. And uh, um, when preparing this assignment, of course, and reading all the materials, you will, you will get really in detail with this topic. So, if any question, I'm available um, today also, or in the following days, uh, during my uh, email forums and so on, you are already used to communication with, with Marina and Mina, so um, tomorrow I'm starting to, to act in Marina <laughs> role, so um, perhaps I can give the floor to Marina now so that you are uh, able to discuss with her about your assignments from the past, so that you are uh, able to uh, ask her any questions about your assignments, and um, thank you for your attention. So hello everybody, once again good evening also to the ones who just joined the session after the introduction of Anita and a theoretical, theoretical introduction and some extra uh, explanations uh, for your last assignment, that's the assignment number eight. Um, I can uh, of course make some uh, reflections to the work up to date that you've done and um, of course, I will, be, uh, I will be here with you also to reply to your questions. Perhaps um, at the beginning of um, this part of the session, I would just like to remind you about the goals of the course, which are to develop the future entrepreneurs and innovative managers who are able to cope with the changing global environment, create and deliver value added and inspire people at the workplace. And at this part of the course, this, that is just Today and tomorrow, actually, <clears throat> finishing with the, last, uh, with the last assignments you have to submit, we should uh, make you understand the, constant, the context of entrepreneurship, why to become an entrepreneur in a global economy, to ideate and to actually understand the process of ideation, creating a business idea to validating opportunity, and to prepare a business model, to understand what innovative business models are to understand what elevator, what elevator pitch is, and to be able to do the feasibility analysis and actually understand how to start up. With the level two, I want now uh, spend some time with describing uh, the objective of the level two because just uh, you just went through it now with Anita. If uh, we continue, I will, I will remind you also, also of the grading system. Uh, because yesterday I spent quite a lot of time. The system is different that I'm used to, and I also need some time to to learn uh, to learn that this new learning environment, virtual virtual environment, like you have to. And and the grading system actually for this course is um, based on six activities that are graded out of eight activities. The first graded activity was actual introduction of three business ideas. It was 15% of the entire grade. The business model was 10%. The business model pitch scenario was 5%. Feasibility analysis that you have to submit tonight, it's 30%. The peer review of the two other feasibility analysis of your peer teams, 
and blog that you have to do in the second part of the course with uh, your professor Anita Majek, it's 25 percent. So actually yesterday I assigned to you maximum up to 30 percent of the total grade as you can see. And I know that uh, what I realized is that actually the students you really have not listened carefully to my web to the web the, to the introductory webinar and you haven't read uh, carefully the <clears throat> detailed instructions for your weekly uh, work and assignments okay we have to learn how to work in the virtual environment and there was all information and of course <clears throat> on the basis of this information you could easily yesterday see that some of the groups uh, actually achieved the maximum result up to 30 points and some of the groups a little bit lower result. So um, what I want to share with you next is just going slowly through the uh, work up to date through all these assignments and then I will start reading your questions and I will start replying to your questions so that we just go with the flow. So if we uh, look at the assignment number one, there was quite a bit of confusion. The assignment number one was test of entrepreneurial competences. Um, the test of entrepreneurial competences was based on <clears throat> actually uh, Daniel Eisenberg's test. It was 18 questions that you have to go through and you had to test yourself. The purpose was that actually understand that uh, there are certain competences that defer an entrepreneur from somebody who is not an entrepreneur. So that was like an introduction to, to the course that you spoke to yourself and assessed yourself whether you, you are a bit more entrepreneurial than you perhaps thought and you had a perception of yourself. This uh, test was obligatory, but it was not graded formally. And it was not needed to upload the results anywhere. That, that's why there was no, no icon where you could submit the results. It was not requested. It was really just a test for you and your private information. The assignment number two, the forum, uh, the discussion on successful entrepreneurs. It was actually, I was uh, trying to make you start analyzing start searching for and analyzing different stories, entrepreneurial stories, stories of success or failures, and to actually, uh, through the analysis, come up with the critical, uh, critical thoughts or let's say referring critically to what you analyzed and uh, blog it in the forum. <clears throat> the purpose was that you, all of you, it was obligatory namely, publish a blog on the topic and that also obligatorily you comment your colleagues' blogs. As the assignment was not graded, all students were not active at this activity and it made me very disappointed. Immediately when you started to publish the blogs, I started to read them and I wrote to each of them, each of your blogs, at least a short comment, but it was not the purpose that I'm the one and being in a role to comment. My purpose was to read carefully and see how do you think. And that's why I actually, when I saw that when the deadline was over and it was 28th of January, five days after we started a course, uh, that we extend you uh, the deadline for submitting the comments to your peer blogs, to, to the blogs of your colleagues. And three, four days after, I haven't seen many more activity or much more activity in this forum. So perhaps we should assign grades to these um, assign, assignments. But you know, I read so many great contributions in this forum, I was amazed you found so many great stories that you shared that it would be really a pity or it is a pity for the ones who actually didn't pay attention to this assignment. I did and I loved it. Um, 
The third assignment was generation of three business ideas and evaluation of opportunity, selection of one idea. Um, as you, it, this is the first assignment where you could get a grade, 15% of the grade. So maximum points were 15. So in the grade center, some of you, uh, you received uh, 15 points, some of you, you received less. I will refer to the grading a little bit later also when I will um, talk about the self-evaluation or let's say evaluation of activity of team members. So you were formed into certain teams, 13 teams, and the, all these teams submitted results of their work, which is a great success. Yes, it is true. Some of the teams worked with a smaller number of active members some of the teams with a larger number of active members. Some of the teams face the situations where certain team members were not that easy to access or could not communicate when you decided that you will have a joint meeting or you will discuss your work. And of course, there was quite a bit of misunderstanding um, actually the functioning of the teams. Once the teams were established, um, I explained in the first webinar that for the first assignment, and that was assignment three, uh, there should be, of course, immediately a team leader appointed. And for the assignment four, another member of the team should take the lead. And for the assign assignment number five, another team member should take a lead. And, uh, you know, actually from your communication, I couldn't see that this happened. And what makes me sad, but it's still great. I mean, still we have certain teams. Um, it's only one team actually since yesterday that is falling apart. But still out of certain teams that 12 teams are submitting the results of their work, on time, that's a great achievement. I really have to congratulate you. You're working in a virtual virtual environment. You're working in a new environment, many of you. You have to find your way. And it's, I believe, quite a challenging, uh, challenging, uh, let's say, uh, uh, quite a challenging work and um, activity. So what can I say about the ideas that you generated? Very good ideas, many interesting ideas. I could see that you were working in teams which are actually the combination of team members from different states, as we have really uh, students from Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia. Uh, we have students from, of course, Macedonia, from Turkey. Uh, and I hope I didn't forget uh, some, some other countries, but of course some of the students you live also somewhere abroad, like uh, in the Western Europe, like in Germany or else. But still you can see this intercultural uh, impact and you were looking by generation of the ideas into the environment that you live in and you're referring to the needs that are not covered and yes, I love the, the idea. Yes. Some of teams, even with six members, that you generated six, uh, six ideas and you introduced them. Uh, so I just uh, want to name some, uh, some, some of your, uh, let's say, um, selected ideas, service for seniors, aircraft maintenance hub, ESUIT, web app for tourists, anti-stress team park, eco gastro audiovisual dining experience, coffee, music website, mobile device for tracking shipment, Klexi, Golden Age Village, Green Walls in Urban Environment, Stock Logistics. So uh, if the maximum point was 15, uh, uh, if the maximum number of points was 15, uh, some groups received that maximum 15 points and the others not. But I must tell you, there was actually uh, no uh, grade assigned to the team lower than uh, 12, but when I uh, took in account the self-evaluation in information about the activity of each individual member in the team, then certain grades dropped down from 13 to 12, 11, or 10. So 
This is not the explanation. Although the teamwork was, uh, was actually graded higher, there might be that in that team some members had lower grade or the ones that didn't uh, participate, of course, didn't get any, any percentage from this activity. But, you know, still, some students found a way to us and with Mina, the mentor, and me uh, being actually every hour of the day in the contact via email, we solved all the problems and also give really the opportunity to everybody that if you cannot work in the team, you can accomplish still the course with individual work by the 19th of February, like the others with the uh, work, continuous work. So um, what, when the grades were lower than 15 or 14%, uh, percent, they were lower also, like for the entire team, then they were lower because uh, there was something missing in the, in the assignment. And mostly what was missing was evaluation of the opportunity and the justification. Why did you decide, based upon this, this evaluation, uh, for a certain idea, the selected idea that you then actually worked uh, on this idea uh, further on in the assignments four, five, six, and seven. Also, one team obviously had a problem with communication and they uh, presented only one idea. That's why, for example, they couldn't have a better grade. If I refer now to the assignment for business model, hey, you who, I'm really happy for you. You submitted really good work. Many of you used Canvanizer as a tool uh, and it was very, very good and no problem if you prepared a lean business model or a nine blobs business model canvas. Uh, in, at the introductory webinar, I told you that you can do the nine uh, blocks business mo model canvas because I spoke in a video about nine blocks business model canvas and it is really widely used. And a lean business model is also perfect, perfect. So it's just, I was very happy uh, when there was a mixture of business models in both, uh, in both uh, modes, prepared in both modes. What I didn't like because we didn't ask you to do, it was that you wrote some teams to spend too much energy on a business model because you wrote theory in a business model. If we ask you to prepare a business model, it's a business model. You could use a canvanizer, you could just make a table yourself, or you could just describe it. But no theory and explanation of the theory uh, was really not requested. Um, most of the teams uh, received here a very high grade, that is 10 out of 10. Sorry, 10 is out of 100, but 10 points of 10 maximum points uh, or percentages. So um, two, only two teams mixed up the key resources and key activities or did not define them well. And in one case, there was also a problem of definition of revenue streams. Otherwise, I was very happy with the results of your work. I really stress that, give an accent to it. I was really happy with that. And you could see that actually the teams were working here together. One more thing, like theory also SWOT analysis was not requested to be part of this assignment. So, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't uh, use it later on in the assignment number seven, which, uh, sorry, in the assignment number six, which is feasibility analysis. Uh, once we talk, for example, about um, um, industry, like market, of course, you could use it there. So uh, we have some really great examples of the business model, and I will address some teams for the permission to share their business models in the announcements section, like Mina did, with the uh, like Mina did with the first uh, uh, with the first grade assignment number three uh, description of the business idea evaluation of opportunity justification of the selection of the idea uh, it's the same thing I mean in that case it was a team one effort and now I have also some ideas and I will ask these teams and just expect my my plea uh, I believe that this is really a great value added so. The assignment five is the scenario for business model pitch. So it could bring you five out of 100 points, five 
So this means that five points was the most you could get out of it. Five of five was the most. And there was also some misunderstanding, and I, I believe that uh, uh, we solved already the problem that some people, some students misunderstood these five points. It's five is maximum out of five. So all the teams submitted the scenarios. There were some questions where we can submit it. it I mean, it's always the assignment. It's always in the weekly, uh, weekly um, instructions document and uh, all the icons are provided. And if there is something that actually you don't see immediately, you don't find your way easily in the LMM environment, then it's Mina there and usually Alexander, our colleague IT expert, that really solved the problem uh, within the shortest possible time. So you just, when you just really see a problem, it's the, really the most correct thing is just please inform us so we can react and uh, solve the problems. So you were really, uh, you prepared the PowerPoint presentations, all of you. They were all timely, in, uh, submitted timely, and those, most of them were really good. I believe that you will be inspired by the pitches. That's why we provided you links to videos of interesting, excellent pitches. And um, okay, at this point, your assignments really differ pretty much, pretty much. But still, there are some excellent, excellent results of your work. And again, I will ask some of you to allow me to give me the permission to publish some of these scenarios in the, announce, in the announcements. Assignment number six, causing you headache, deadline tonight, tonight, tonight. There were some questions, is it the seventh or the sixth? Yeah, I know that there was a little bit confusion, but still it was the seventh. It was published in the weekly instructions. I really, um, I really uh, checked that. It was the seventh, and I, uh, I uh, decided that um, we want, uh, we want, uh, actually leave you under the doubt, is it the sixth or the seventh, because uh, working in teams gave, gives you the opportunity actually that you can share work and the last, the last assignment, number seven, the peer review that has to be uh, submitted tomorrow is actually um, based upon the assignment six and we believe that that uh, one day uh, one day time can be enough also for preparing the peer review. But, um, you know, the feasibility analysis uh, gives you 30 points, maximum 30 points out of 100, so it will be graded by 30 out of 30 maximum. And, um, of course, there you will have some open questions still for me. I know, I, I know. for example, I can tell you, we didn't define the, the, the a minimum length or let's say extent of the feasibility analysis. Important it is that you tackle all the four elements of feasibility analysis. That's very important. And one of the teams said, okay, we will submit 2,500 words, document with 2,500 words. We know that it, uh, the maximum is 3,500 to 4,000. Yes, I agree and I confirm. I hope that you follow the discussion board because such questions arise in discussion board and you should read the discussion board and see what already your peers have asked us and we responded. And um, so yes, okay, as long as your work uh, is qualitative and you tackle all the four elements of feasibility analysis, I will be happy, but please do not exceed 3,000, 5,000 words or 4,000 words. As for the assignment seven, we peer review. Uh, Mina announced which groups have to be revised by which team. So which assignments have to be revised by each individual team. And you have each team has to revise two assignments, uh, two assignments of other teams. So this is clear. Information is published. And peer reviews will uh, bring you maximum 15 points out of 100, which is 15 points is maximum, so it will be 15 out of 15 maximum. And that assignment has to be submitted tomorrow, the 8th of February. Okay, in Slovenia we have a holiday, but there is no holiday for us. Uh, and um, don't forget, you should evaluate integrity of the feasibility analysis. This means if the 
your peers in another assignment respected the recommended content of the feasibility analysis if they tackled all the four elements, the product, the industry market, the organization, and financial part of the feasibility. Uh, then to evaluate the adequacy of the used and adapted data in the analysis and the feasibility of the analysis. So is it feasible? And um, there I will be uh, frank with you. Once you submit tonight the feasibility analysis, the peer review, if you do, do not submit it tomorrow, um, Mina will communicate also with you that it can be submitted latest by Friday. I will not publish that officially, but Friday. If you don't manage it tomorrow, and if does, it doesn't interfere with the last activity you will have to work on, that's assignment eight with Anita, and Anita's part of the course, then it's okay. It is also the eight. There will be some students uh, who decided to work also individually and uh, sorry uh, which means yeah I will go back uh, so that uh, who will work individually and I of course recommend to everybody who started the course to do it then you have to provide an individual project work and you can use for example, the ideas that you are working on in a team, but you decide that you will continue individually. So just use whatever you have done already. Use it in your own feasibility analysis, and it, the document should be up to 6,000 words. Okay, I again, didn't define minimum, but up to 6,000 words. If there will be like 10% less, it won't be a problem. But Analysis should include also the field of innovative management and suggestions for overcoming the challenges in the knowledge economy. And here you will have to address your teacher, your professor, Anita. So the deadline will be 19th of February. Uh, and here it's uh, my last reflection about self-evaluation. Some in the webinar, introductory webinar, we told you we need information from you when you work in the team. How how active was each individual member of the team? But we didn't ask you to, to write like, you know, essays of one page evaluation of your own work. Mina published the team one assignment three, description of business ideas. On the first, on the cover page, there was information in a table, how much actually each individual member contributed to the assignment and that was all what we asked of course if you had some problems you could always write about them and uh, to Mina or to me and of course um, uh, we were aware of that and uh, Mina mostly helped you also out so uh, I said before regarding grades your reports on activity in each team finally played an important role in the grading process. So if anybody has any question, please address me directly in my email, and you have that email, and you know that I respond very correctly and fast. So um, that's about it. We, here we go to your questions, and there are some long questions. No, I'm not. They're not? OK. Mm -hmm. Marina, my, 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 my name mate, let's say, Marina. When we get our first improvement calendar, it was star stated that February the 8th is non-working day. What that means? Because we have a deadline tomorrow. Marina, okay. Uh, never in this online courses we respect any, any, any holiday. Sorry, we also got used to it. Sometimes it's uh, even more important holidays. Uh, you know, Christmas, Christmas, <laughs> okay, for Christmas we don't do it, but uh, for, uh, uh, for Easter holiday and so on. So Marina, and as you listen now to me, you, uh, you, you uh, actually posted your question earlier before I saw it and I said that I won't be angry if you provide your work, if you submit your last assignment 
on Friday latest, and Friday is the 10th, okay? Because I will not have time now until Friday, for sure not until the Saturday actually, to revise your uh, feasibility assignments and peer reviews. So feasibility assignment is very important that they are submitted tonight, but then it is maximum really the 10th so that you have a little bit flexibility and perhaps some of the Slovenian guys, you can even take a deep breath on, uh, on the fresh air on the 8th. That's tomorrow. I want, I have tomorrow also. Don't think that I'm free. I am working in Ljubljana tomorrow uh, as we have some winter school on finances too. So that was Marina. Kreješimir. Marina, there is no such thing as non-working day for entrepreneur. Thank you. The story of Pipistril of uh, Boscarol is, you know when do I work, he said? On Sundays when other people are free because my products are products that people buy because they're, that's their hobby, you know, ultralight airplanes. And he said, these people have time perhaps only on Sunday, so I have to assist them when they have a need for me and my assistance. So good, Kreshimer, thank you. Okay, Marina, it's okay, I've heard the answer already, super. Olga, Olga, she has more questions. Does this mean that team one has to peer review teams 38, 13, 3 and 13? <laughs> okay, I don't have my glasses on my nose. So yes, team one reviews the assignments of teams 3 and 13. As you heard, we had 13 teams, okay? So 13 feasibilities will be tonight submitted or one was submitted already yesterday and that was from the team 10. Okay, so it's all clear. Isi, hello, thank you for your answer, Olga. Isi, we will not work on team 7 and 12 in peer reviews, but I can't see their work. Uh, we, will work. Uh, we will work on team 7 and 12, you see. I, I read what I want to read, probably, in peer reviews, but I can't see their work on their folder. That's because, you see, as we already answered, that until tonight midnight, you cannot expect all the feasibilities because some team members are still working on them. Sorry, some teams are still working on them. And in that... Um, under that icon, you can just see perhaps the working versions of the teams. So usually, and it should be like that, the final document is always uh, named as the final document. So you will be able, that's exception, to see the assignment number six, which is visibility for all the teams. So if you have energy, read all of them, not just the two you have to do the peer review, but the peer review is for the two of them. And the peer review is not public, Peer review is not open to everybody. Once you submit them, it's only me who can read them, okay? Don't misunderstand. So, feasibility, yes. Mm -mm. Peer reviews, no, but I will comment. Don't worry, don't worry. Even if Anita will be on attack, under attack, under the fire of your questions and curiosity, which is great, I will be following the course like she did now too. <clears throat> so... Thank you for your answer. We will pause tonight. Yeah, Team 7, just do it. Uh, team 12, thank you. Easy, okay, good. There are some more questions. You are, we are 34 people now in this uh, webinar. Ask me, please, Muhammad. okay, you're happy? Okay, will I get some feedback on the first grades? No questions? Okay, I, I know you will address me privately, but still, any questions that can be asked? Uh, uh -huh. Krishimir. I was not graded. My team members were. I submitted all assignments, self-evaluation, the same as the all other team members. Krishimir. I wrote yesterday an announcement and I asked actually all the teams and everybody that if, if an individual member of the team did not get a grade, something was missing, there was some miscommunication with me. So please, Krishimir, your team should submit really a proper information. And um, I have my notes here. You were in which team, Krishimir? Can you write it, please? You're in which team? Uh, team one. Ha, Krishimir. Yejud, of course. I have you here. Then. 
How come? Yeah, he did. He did. Of course, I have it here. So, if you are not graded, I will check. I will check because I have I have a remark. It is graded and all the team members equally, which means that there has to be a mistake. It is your team is one of the teams that was really excellent and had the maximum grade and perhaps that a mistake happened when I was putting a grade in that it didn't take it but you should have the equal grade and I will already I will I will you don't need to submit me uh, another document on that because I really know that your team did everything so we have what I was okay uh, Nedanowska, I don't see the name, I'm sorry. We have 4,000 words uh, in visibility and in three, and plus 300 for the cover page and other text used literature. Is this okay? It's okay. Perfect. It is okay. No problem. Nina, maybe there is an IT problem. On what, Nina? Well, uh, on the question of the of Krishimir? Yeah. Okay, I will solve it. It is, you know, I had quite a lot of... Uh, I mean, I spent four hours just to put the grades in, then it's all clear, okay? Which means that I had to enter, exit, and enter, exit, and it might be because it was night, you know, that the grades were published by midnight, so uh, it was still yesterday, not today. Uh, you see that I'm in a good mood, no way, so anyway, um, it might have happened. I apologize, Krishmir. I will really go to the grading center and make you happy, okay? Because you, your team, made me happy with your work too. See me. Maybe I missed the part you noticed, but where can we reach other teams? Aha. Uh -huh. It is where they have to be submitted. And if you don't find it, immediately contact Mina, please, because Alexander and Mina worked on on this issue and uh, I know that it is public for all the teams. Uh, no, I don't think that there will be any link in the webinar. It's just, uh, it is just where you submit the work. So they will have access. Everybody will have access to the feasibility analysis assignment six, not to assignment seven, to assignment six. Ah, Nina is happy with the grades. Nina, and which team you were? Of course, the first team and I'm, oh, okay, Tony, here you are, okay. Uh, also, congratulations to the team three, Tony. You did a great work too. Everybody did great work. I mean, with all the struggle, I mean, with all the struggles, with all your, um, actually, with all the challenges that you had to cope and being for the first time, most of all, working in the virtual environment. Great. So, okay, Atakan, our analysis is okay when it is online platform, but when you download it, Charts are a little bit wrecked. Is it a problem? Of course, Atakan, I will immediately decrease your grade. No way. It's not a problem. It happens, and it's just the compatibility of the different programs we use. No problem. Okay, here are, here are the team members talking to each other, motivating each other. And are there any questions for me? Because we will slowly depart. Any more questions to me? Don't make me come home and you there will be a flood of your emails in my email box. Okay. Thanks. I hope that you I hope that you have fun not only headaches uh, with our course from sparkle to flame. It started with sparkle, now we are all inflamed, aren't we? Yeah, I, 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 I can see that you had a lot of fun. Many of the teams, you know, Mina is uh, all the time involved in, uh, in actually in seeing what you do and how you communicate. And we saw also in discussion board that you did you address yourself also yourselves as friends. Imagine when you will meet each other sometime in your life. Hmm? <laughs> Maida, you know, young professionals purposely Purposely, how many fun with all deadlines? Purposely, Maida, we put pressure on you. We put pressure on you. Young professionals, you have to cope with that stress. Okay, 
our team, Team 4, is having a lot of fun. Let everybody know this. This is a big step for humanity and a small step for us. Okay, our team, Team number 4. four. Yeah, okay, Team number 4. I see that actually uh, you, you had quite a dynamic communication and collaboration. And actually some team members could not work um, at a you could not work all the time equally, but it doesn't matter as long as you all achieved the objective and that was the assignment done and submitted. Yeah, yeah, Arsim, as long as you are improving, that's how you look at this, at this optimistic view and it should be like that. So, Isi, thank you, thank you to you. Good evening. So, are we actually departing from the webinar, or we have so much fun? Um, okay. Thank you really for your attention. In the name of myself and in the name of myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you are you myself. You are not myself. You are Anita. So, okay. So you see, your teachers are in a good mood. Just please, uh, really, really, we will be so happy when all of you who decided to participate in the course also accomplish it or as team members or as individuals we will be really really happy also to talk to you about uh, the feedback because this is now this first um, performance in the improvement project and the first course and of course it's a great learning experience for all of us so thank you and good evening Bye. Bye.